There you are. Geralt of Rivia, safe and sound. Just when I was starting to miss you. This is a review for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. If you came here expecting anything other than that, you might be in the wrong place. But hey, much like a romantic comedy, if you want to take this mistake and see where it goes, feel free. In this world of The Witcher, it is a time of war, the Nilfgaardian Empire invading the Northern Realms after weakening their resolve, mostly by assassinating their kings. Meanwhile, this feudal continent had been complicated centuries ago by the conjunction of the spheres, which is the least interesting way to describe a dimensional collision that mixed in magic, monsters, spirits, elves, and dwarves into a mundane world. Sorceresses and mages learned how to wield this magic, bringing them both power and suspicion. And to deal with the monsters that now roam this world, people are recruited by secretive orders and mutated into witchers, created to kill the unnatural beasts. You are the witcher, Geralt of Rivia, and this is your story. It's not just your story, though. It's also the story of Cyrilla Fiona Elaine Rhiannon, also known as Ciri. Yes, I know. Geralt's somewhat adopted daughter and the center of a prophecy that affects the entire world and possibly multiple worlds at that. Unsurprisingly, the plot revolves around you trying to find her in the midst of a war while dealing with a spectral horde called the Wild Hunt. The combat is glorious. No, I'm sorry, I have to be objective here. The combat is objectively glorious. When it comes to responsive, free-flowing controls, The Witcher 3 excels. Deftly dodging a monster's claws before spinning into a strike is immensely satisfying each and every time. It's also incredibly responsive on PC. Console users are going to have substantially less FPS, but unless you're trying to fight on the hardest settings while just dodging and slashing, it's unlikely to affect you much. The basic combat system is intuitive enough, dodging, blocking, and attacking with your sword. You can easily get through the game on lower difficulties with those three alone, and it's much easier to grasp than the start of Witcher 2. Managing your stamina, the yellow bar in the upper left hand corner is likely the most awkward part that new players will run into. The key thing to remember is your stamina affects your ability to use magical abilities called signs, but it also affects your ability to block. Learning the difference between dodging and rolling is necessary to excel at combat, partially for this reason. Rolling delays your stamina recharge, but dodging is more of a sidestep and not always viable. Getting the hang of this balance is oddly rewarding, if somewhat trial and error. Targeting is also important, and by default is a soft lock system. If you're moving, regardless of your camera view, it will target whatever you're moving towards. If you're stationary, it targets the nearest enemy, which changes as the enemies move, so be aware of this, or it can lead to a leaping strike in a sudden direction you never intended. You can lock onto a singular target, but as it also hijacks your camera to keep it in view, it's a quick way to get ambushed in a crowd if you're not careful. The complexity of the system is very much opt-in, though it gives you a dizzying array of potential combat loadouts. Use an Axie sign to stun an enemy or make them fight for you. Use a Quen sign as a damage-dealing shield or to convert damage into health. Use your crossbow to down a dive-bombing griffin. These are just a few examples. A vast number of useful bombs and potions are included as well, and three Witcher School specializations have their own benefits for whatever playstyle you prefer. Allocating these ability points after leveling is not entirely intuitive, however, and some new players may not realize that you don't necessarily have to take the first tier of a specific skill to level up a second, third, or fourth. In addition to combat, investigations require you to engage your heightened senses to look for tracks, bloodstains, hidden objects to find who or what you're looking for. None of it is complex, and it helps more for immersive purposes than anything else. A Witcher, Geralt of Rivia in particular, is an incredible tracker, so this adds another way to step inside his world, and the audio effects of hearing distant threats are very well done. Mm. Big, uh, this like. Wow, truly great story. This story is incredible, weaving a disjointed timeline and multiple books worth of history into a narrative which rarely stops to catch its breath. Witcher 3 has the unenviable task of wrapping up over a dozen character storylines, both past and present, along with the fate of the entire world in one game. This can sometimes result in an imbalance between exposition and gameplay, yet it creates emotional moments between characters without the presumption of past knowledge of the series, and still has to be light enough to keep people moving through. 
At its most basic, it's a father searching for his daughter. But with each new unexpected reaction, the characters become very much three-dimensional. This complexity sets up emotionally powerful scenes later on and almost always hits the mark. These emotional moments hit harder and more often than might be expected in a game whose primary claims to fame are sex and violence. Beneath the gritty, bloody world of which there are constant reminders, this narrative is very focused on how we as humans react and interact with one another when everything's gone to hell. The character animations are realistic yet subtle, especially in facial expressions which can hit you at unexpected moments. The voice acting is on point, most surprisingly for Geralt due to the character's limited range, but it's consistently dead on. The best thing you can say for a game's voice acting is that you don't notice the skill because you just fall into assuming they're the character. That's the case here. It's easy to take the brutal world of The Witcher and expect the shock value alone to carry you through. It's much more difficult to trust the player to become accustomed to that brutality than search for the vestiges of humanity within it even as the game continually gives you reminders of the futility of your task. Intolerance and fear are the insidious foes in The Witcher, and you fight them every step of the way. No side is perfectly pure and everyone has their own demons to deal with. No matter what side you're cheering for, there's a doubt in the back of your mind, an inherent distrust or fear that this could all go sideways at any moment. It adds risk, and more importantly, seriousness to every decision you make. There isn't a light side or a dark side, there's infuriatingly vague shades of grey and they force you to realize that having the power to change things only extends so far. Even worse, it makes you think that you might not be the best equipped to make these decisions at all. For a main character pushing beyond his own code of neutrality, for the people that he cares about, the game teases you by making it seem like you can give everyone what they want while making it impossible to do so. The Witcher 3 is brutal, emotional, funny, and lighthearted. It can be alternately inspiring and overwhelmingly tragic. Plainly stated, it is a new high watermark of storytelling in gaming. The options available are fairly extensive. If you're on PC, then you'll be able to find a setting that works best for your rig without sacrificing too much. On an i7 with a 290X, you should be able to max everything without a problem, but it looks beautiful even on lower settings. Even on consoles, this is a surprisingly stable game for an open world. The occasional bug is present and there were a few of them at launch, but they're never game breaking and the worst I've run into allowed me to save at that point, reload right where I was and it was fixed. There are also options to remove parts of your HUD or remove it completely. These options might seem extraneous, but it really does add to the sense of immersion and I highly recommend it once you become comfortable with the controls. Just don't turn it off completely, or it hides your conversation options as well. Overall, I can't say enough good things about this game, so I'll cut it short here. But enjoy the rest of the video, and hopefully you give it a shot. It is the game of the year, after all.
hunting that Zoogle in the trash heap. You spent half the next day bathing, scrubbing yourself. How can I forget? You ever gonna stop bringing that up? Once fought a Zoogle up to my waist in sewage. A Zoogle cropped up in a- I beg you, not another word about Zoogles. Uh, guess it's high time I got to work. A bit more enthusiasm, Witcher. You know, you just might enjoy yourself. Yay. Can't wait. Thank you.